Hello, I'm Christine Kersey, and I'm the author of post-apocalyptic, dystopian, suspense, and sweet romance novels. Recently, I've begun putting my audiobooks up on YouTube, and since then I've had some of my author friends ask me how I went about doing that. So I decided to create a tutorial to go over the process I follow to get my audiobooks up on YouTube. This tutorial will go over how to get your files off of ACX, how to import them into Camtasia, which is the editing software program that I use, how to create a static image to go with your audiobooks, how to compile your file in Camtasia so that it's not overly large, and how to get your file up on YouTube. So let's get started. The first step is to get your files from ACX, if that is where you had your narration done. So you'll go up to your projects, completed projects, find the particular book that you want to create as an audiobook, and select it, and then go to produce audiobook, and this is where all your files are. So then you just press download. You have to download each and every chapter and save them someplace on your computer where you can find them again later. Then you want to open Camtasia. You'll go up to File, New Project, and then go to Import Media. Navigate to where you downloaded the files and then select all your audio files. If you select the first one and then scroll to the end, hold the shift key down and select the last one and then hold the command key down and then you could add the additional, any additional ones you need to add. I want to include my opening and closing credits and then press import. It brings all of them in. Now I want to start with the opening credit. Also, one thing to note is I renamed the files because when they were downloaded they didn't have a number in front of them. And as you can see, when you're in Camtasia, you can't see the whole name, and it's just easier if you can see the order they go in in the beginning. So you can right-click on it, rename, and then add a number in front of it, the chapter number in front of it. In Camtasia, I'm going to right-click on Opening Credit, Add to Timeline at Playhead. Then I want to get this. This is the playhead right here. I want it to go to the end, and the quickest way to do that is to use this little arrow to make it go to the end. And then I'm going to start with chapter one. So I'm going to right click, add to timeline at playhead. See how long this is? I don't want it to be stretched across my screen. So this, I'm going to use this to shrink it. See how it kind of shrinks it down. And then I'm going to use this arrow to go to the end of the playhead. Notice the order this is in. It shows one, then 10, 11, 12, because it sees the one and then the one zero. So the way they do it is not one, two, but one, one, zero. So make sure you pay attention to the chapter numbers. So I'm going to scroll down and go to chapter two, add a timeline at playhead, use the arrow to go to the end. Then I need to go down to chapter three. Now I'm skipping two and going to 20. So again, you just have to pay attention to the numbers. And this is why it's easier to rename them with a chapter number in the beginning of the file name. And then make sure and put the closing credits at the, at the very end. Make sure you save once in a while. Go up to File, Save As. Give it a name. I'm just going to call it Test Book. And then I like to kind of double check to make sure I didn't mess up with putting those in because that would be pretty tragic to have a chapter missing or out of order. This little bar here, if you drag it, this will move the playhead so you can go all the way to the beginning. And then I stretch this out a little bit so that I can make sure that first one says opening credits. Then we have chapter one. Shrink it a little bit here. And I just kind of go through and look at all the numbers, make sure I have them all in the right order. You can scroll to the right. One thing to know is this little magnet here, you want to click on that and that magnetizes it so there's no gaps at all. It connects everything together without any breaks. So you want to have that magnet turned on. Now you want to bring in the image that you're going to use. And if you come up here and you go to project settings, you can see that the size of the, the dimensions of the screen are 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. And so that's the size of the image you're going to want to have on here. So when you create 
that whatever image, whatever static image you're going to have, that's the, those are the dimensions you're going to want. Click the plus sign to import media and go to wherever your image is that you're going to use. I have a cover that I created that are those dimensions with an image of the book in the center. Drag that onto your track here. And then again, you want to make sure and use this little magnet so that it's connected to the end and then drag it all the way to the end. The last step to create the file is to export it. And you can either go up here to export local file or export here and then local file. I like to save it on my computer. So I choose local file. I don't want to go directly to YouTube. That's just my personal preference. I haven't tried that, so I don't if you want to do that, you can, of course, but this video is showing just how to do it locally. The important thing you want to do is you want to go to options and you want to change the frame rate, not the key frame rate. I don't know what that does to be perfectly honest, but it's the frame rate that matters. So because this is a static image, we don't need it to show 30 frames per second like a full video. We just need one frame per second and that will keep your file size dramatically smaller and then press OK, and then make sure you know where you're saving it, and then press Export, and it'll compile it. It shouldn't take too long. It's 150 right now. Let's see how long it takes. This is a MacBook Pro with an M1 chip, so it might be a little bit faster than an older computer running an Intel chip. OK, that took about three minutes. This is a six hour audiobook, so that's pretty good. If I go to where the file is, it's 441 megabytes. That's not too bad for a six hour video. And that's only because it has a static image. If we, if we didn't reduce that to one frame per second, it would be at least 10 times <laughs> that size and probably a lot more than that. So that's the thing to do. Now, the next step is to upload your book to YouTube. What you need to do is go into your YouTube studio, go to youtube.com. And then over on the right, you need to log in and then you click on YouTube Studio. Once you're logged into YouTube Studio, you want to press Create and Upload Videos. You press Select File and you navigate to where that file is and let it upload. And then you can enter in some information. Give your book a title, put in the description, and you need to make sure and put in a thumbnail. I just use that same image that I had created that I used for my static image. Add it to playlists. Give it some keywords. And the language. Um, I didn't put a recording date because it was recorded by a narrator. I don't know exactly when he did it. I deselected allow embedding and I deselected allow people to sample this content. Then you just you just press next and just go through the different steps and uh, it'll take you through it. And that's basically it. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.